This week, we wanted to show you how to make bolo bao, Hong Kong pineapple buns. They're a buttery pastry with a sugar cookie topping and served at Cha San Ting with an optional but awesome enormous slab of butter. Of course, despite the name, they don't actually contain any fruit, referring instead to that crispy, sugary crust, which looks like the skin of a pineapple. Sort of. Regardless, to get started, we'll make a quick liquid yeast. To 60 grams of water, add in 6 grams shredded potato, bring to a boil, and reduce by half. Once reduced, wait till it's about 65 centigrade, then slowly pour into 6 grams or about a tablespoon AP flour, mixing well, breaking up the potato. When it's about 35 centigrade, add in 2 grams sugar and 6 grams beer. Now, this guy's bottled a local microbrew, but anything alive and unpasteurized should do the trick. We want the yeast here, but different beers from different parts of the world are different, so for standardization purposes, we'll also toss in a packet, 5 grams, active dry yeast. Now set that aside in a warm, damp place for 4 hours to ferment. Using that liquid yeast, we can make the sponge. Add 20 grams of your liquid yeast, 30 grams water, 5 grams sugar, and 50 grams of bread flour. The sponge and dough method, called zhong zhong in Mandarin, is very much an import and the go-to method for Western-style breads in China. Once combined, set aside in a warm, damp place for 4 hours to ferment, or alternatively, 13 hours in the fridge. 4 hours later, this is what we're looking at. You know the sponge is ready once it's sort of a stringy web like this. Now add 70 grams of water to your sponge, mix and pour into 135 grams of bread flour. Combine to get something shaggy and super sticky. Then add 25 grams of sugar together with 15 grams of milk powder. Combine, then drizzle in 20 grams beaten egg. Once incorporated, grab one end of the dough and start to slap it continuously against your work surface. At the initial stages, this might be reminiscent of the French slap and fold method for working with high hydration doughs. But unlike the French method, this doesn't add any air allowing the dough to hold its shape to get something more like a round bun rather than a flat biscuit. Unfortunately, developing the gluten in this way takes a while, so buckle in because we've got to slap this for 50 minutes. 50 minutes later, this is what we're looking at. The dough started to get stretchy enough to pull it a bit before it breaks. Now add 16 grams of butter, first mixing it with your hands, then by cutting the dough with a bench scraper, squeezing it, cutting again, and so forth. After about two minutes of doing that, it's time to go back to slapping for a final 10 minutes. And after that 10 minutes, now the dough should be smooth and a bit stretchy. Cut into 60 gram pieces, and we can form the buns. So grab a piece, flatten it with your palm, and make a fold inward. Grab the next bit, fold inward, continuing around to get something vaguely bun-like. Pinch a bit at the top, then grab the side of the bun and fold it up to the center. Go around the bun twice with that motion, then pinch the sides towards our seal. This whole bit is so that the dough can maintain shape while rising. With that pinch side on the bottom, gently roll, then twist with your hands for about 30 seconds, just like you were shaping bread. Now place on a baking sheet, loosely cover with some plastic wrap and a dry towel, and let it rise in a warm, damp place for one hour. As that's rising, let's make the sugar cookie topping. When we refer to this as sugar cookie, it's because it's really super similar. These were some extra topping from testing that Steph literally baked straight up to make cookies. To make it, add 70 grams sugar to a bowl together with 70 grams of butter. Mash together with a spatula for about 2 minutes, or alternatively just cream it however you're used to. Now add 16 grams beaten egg, mix well, and we'll move over to our dry ingredients. Starting with 100 grams of cake flour, we'll toss in some leavening agents. You might be familiar with our old friend Chou Fun, Chinese baker's ammonia, which we'll annoyingly call for along with baking powder in order to make this nice and crispy. For this, you could also sub in baking soda. The ratios would be a bit different, but we'll spell it all out for you in the description box. So toss in one gram of baking powder and 0.3 grams or about an eighth of a teaspoon Chou Fun, then sift those into your wet ingredients. Mix those together for about a minute till combined, then set in a freezer for one hour to chill it right down. Now our buns should be finished rising. You know it's good once you press down into the dough and it slowly comes back. We'll be proofing and baking these in 10 centimeter molds. You don't need to use a mold here, but if you want a tart or mini pie mold would also work great. Once you've lightly oiled them, grab one of your buns and press it flat again. Using the same technique as before, 
pinch into a bun shape, pull and stretch towards the center, then with that side down, shape the thing. With the buns in the molds, they're good to proof. In an ideal world, we want to proof at 38 centigrade, 70% humidity, so we put some hot boiled water in a bowl, placed in our wok, put those buns on top and covered. If you got a bigger batch, feel free to do the same in the oven, just proof those for 30 minutes. Back to the sugar topping, cut those into 30 gram pieces. You'll have a little extra here, just make some sugar cookies like we said. Get some saran wrap, form the piece into a little ball, fold the saran wrap over and press down with a bench scraper or something similarly flat. Work through those, and we've got our cookie topping. Now, take a sharp knife and gently cut a small checkerboard pattern into the topping, that pattern giving it the whole characteristic pineapple sort of look. And now, we can assemble. Take your proofed buns and brush on a bit of beaten egg to help the topping stick. Place your topping on, then brush on a bit more egg for color, and these are good to bake. Toss in a preheated oven at 180 centigrade for 17 minutes. 17 minutes later, the pineapple buns are done. Cut them out of their molds, let them rest on a rack for a minute or two, and these are ready to eat. But if you're like me, the pineapple buns just aren't complete without an ostentatiously sized knob of butter. It's a heart attack in a bun, but so good. So right, we went with the hand kneading and smacking method, but you can totally use a stand mixer. If you're using stand mixer, knead it on one uh, for about 30 minutes, and then take it out, give it a few smacks on a smooth surface, and then you will get your dough ready. So check out the red link in the description box for detailed recipe. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.